Hey guys, so we are on key attributes of quadratic functions. Um, on the blog, it might say topic three. Okay, quadratics, topic three. Okay, so this is our topic three, um, key attributes of quadratic functions. So we're gonna go to our first page on the inside of this little foldable. So if you downloaded the worksheet um, that's right underneath this video, um, you got this, this sheet right here. Um, you just fold it in half and then you have your little booklet. So we're on that first block on the inside. So this is the parent function of a quadratic. Uh, my vertex is the origin. And this is also my y-intercept and my x-intercept. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to find all these attributes of this quadratic function. We're going to write them all down, um, and we'll do that for our, these other ones here. Actually, I'll do this one, and then I'll do this one, and then you guys will do this one right here. Okay, so the parent function is going to be a little bit different than all the other kind of quadratics that you do this on because the parent function is just kind of that special one where it's um, it's that original function that all the other quadratic functions come from. Okay. Thank you, Benjamin. Very nice. Thank you, Benjamin. Okay. So the domain for a quadratic is always going to be all real numbers. And that's how we write that. It's two um, marks. Two parallel lines that are vertical and then the R shape. And then for your range, you're always going to set it up with a bracket and then a Y and then a line and then a Y. So you always start off like that. Now my range, sorry, let me go back to the domain. So the domain is that horizontal left to right of the graph. So what is my graph doing from left to right? Okay, so if I look at this graph from left to right, it's um, it's going to go infinitely wide. It'll as it goes as you keep going up, the graph will just keep getting wider and wider and wider. It'll just keep getting wide on both sides, and it will never have any limit. It'll just keep getting wider and wider, all out to both sides. So that's why it's all real numbers for the domain. Now the range, that's the up and down stretch of the graph. So this one does have a boundary or limit. Our graph starts here and it goes up from there, but it will never go below that point. So if I look at my vertex, ask myself, is my graph, or all these points on this graph, are they greater than this or are they less than this? Your answer should be that it's greater than this. So all my y values are gonna be greater than or equal to whatever this is on the y-axis. So if the parent function on the y-axis, this is zero. So greater than or equal to zero. All right, so we're gonna go to the next one. So my x-intercepts, those are the places where the graph crosses the x-axis. If you look at this one, it only touches at one point, right? Because this is my x-axis, and this is my y-axis. If I want to do it in a color, I can do this. This is my x-axis, and this is my y-axis here. Okay. So where is this graph touching that blue line, the x-axis? It's going to be at zero. So I'm going to put here zero in a bracket. So that's my x-intercept, it's my zeros, it's my roots, it's my solutions. These are all the same thing. They're just different ways that you can say that. My y-intercept, that's where this graph crosses this orange line or the y-axis. That's also going to be at zero. So I'm going to put that down. 
my brackets. So this is my x-intercept. This is my y-intercept. The brackets, again, just mean that that's a solution set. It's not a coordinate or anything. It's a solution set. Okay, so then I ask myself, is it a maximum or is it a minimum? Well, if you look at this graph, okay, to find out if it's a maximum or a minimum, you have to look at this point right here. And I ask myself, is this a low point or is this a high point? Okay, it's a low point, right? This is the lowest point of the graph. So that means it's going to be a minimum because minimum means low, right? So this is going to be a minimum. My vertex, I'm going to put parentheses here because they're, when they ask for the vertex, they're asking for the actual coordinate of that point. So if I look at this point, this point you should know is at the origin. So this point is 0, 0. I'm going to put that down here. And now we need the equation for the axis of symmetry. So axis of symmetry, um, it's that point that divides um, two equal halves that are sort of reflections of each other. Like if you were looking in the mirror, you would see it a reflection of itself. Okay. So the axis of symmetry is that line that divides those reflections. So if you look here on this one, my axis of symmetry is actually the y-axis. Okay, this is the line that divides those two pieces that sort of are reflections of each other. Okay, so the way that you write this, the equation for this line is going to be x equals 0. Because the vertical line, and vertical lines are always x equals whatever the number is where it crosses the x-axis. So this right here, this line, you're going to start with x equals, and this line crosses the x-axis at 0. Um, something else that might be helpful for you to know is that this number right here and this number right here will always be the same. They should be the same. So these numbers will always be the same. Also, on your range, this number right here, that's your boundary, and this number right here will also always be the same number. So those two numbers will also always be the same number. So basically, if you have your vertex, you can get your range and your axis of symmetry. All you'd have to do here is figure out if it was greater than or less than. Okay, so we are going to go ahead and go, let me, I'm going to show this one more time so to make sure that you wrote all that down. I'll put arrows here, arrow, arrow. Okay, so we're going to go to the next one. Okay, so my domain always is going to be all real numbers. That'll be the same for every quadratic that you do. The range, I'm going to set it up with my bracket and my y, my line, then my other y. I'm going to look at the vertex. I'm going to ask myself, are these values on this graph, are they less than or are they greater than the vertex? Hopefully you can tell that all these points on this graph are going to have values that are lower than this vertex. So that means that y is lower or less than, so you're going to put here less than or equal to, so y is less than or equal to my boundary, which is going to be right here. This is my boundary. 
me use a different color to show that. So this will be my boundary right here. This is where the graph does not cross. Okay, and if you look here, the number for that is four. So I'm gonna put here four. So what I said is the range is y such that y is less than or equal to four. And that makes sense, right? Because all my values are gonna be less than four. Okay. Okay, so I got my range, I got my domain. Let's do our x-intercepts, our zeros, our roots, our solutions. This is all the same thing, remember? So let's just for fun just put zeros this time instead of x-intercept. So my zeros are gonna be where the graph crosses the x-axis. So at this point and at this point. So if you look closely, this is going to be negative one. So that's one of them. And this is going to be three. I'm just going to put that here. So those are my zeros or my x-intercepts. Next, let's go to y-intercept. There's no other, at least not that I can remember right now, any other name for this. So the y-intercept is where it crosses the y-axis. Where it crosses the y-axis is going to be at this point right here. Okay. This is where it crosses the y-axis. So that point right there is right below the 4, so it's 3. And then I asked myself, is this a maximum or is it a minimum? Well, it's like a hill, right? So this is my maximum point. It's the highest point. So it's going to be my maximum point. So it's a maximum. My vertex, that point should be a coordinate. So if you look here, I need to find the coordinate for that point. You start at the origin, and you have to go over one to the right. So I'm going to put here one. So starting at the origin, I go one to the right, and then I go up four. So one to the right, and up four. My equation for my axis of symmetry, um, remember that is the line that goes vertically straight through the vertex. It's where it divides the, the parabola or the quadratic into two uh, symmetrical pieces. So I just look, for this one, I just look, what is that number where it crosses the x-axis? If you look, it's a negative, sorry, not negative, it's positive one, positive one. And like I said, these two numbers should always be the same. So I know that that's right. Okay, so I want you guys, so if you wanna look at that, those are the answers for that one. So from here, you're going to go ahead and do that um, next part on your own, so you can see if you can do that. So you should pause the video right here and do it, and then come back, and I'll give you the answers for that. Okay. So for this, this is domain is always all real numbers. Your range that you should have got for this, remember you always set it up with your bracket, y, line, and then a y. I look at my vertex, and I ask myself, are these values of this graph greater than this point or less than this point? Okay, they're greater than this point. That means my y is going to be greater than or equal to whatever this number is, my boundary. My boundary here is going to be negative 9. That's where it crosses the y-axis, negative 9. My x-intercepts are the two points where it crosses the x-axis, so we're going to say roots this time. My roots should have been negative 5 and 1. My y-intercept is where it crosses the y-axis. All right, so that would be this point right here, which is negative 5. This is a minimum because it's a low point, so it's a minimum value. My vertex, I start at the origin. So to get to my point that I want, I had to go 2 to the left, so that's a negative 2. And then I had 